With two days remaining in October, Jared Mills is once again embedded in the home range of his top target, Hermit. As the day breaks, a different buck approaches the stand and proceeds to steal the show. about 8.45 here on the morning of October 29th. The buck that we just had come right underneath us is a deer I know fairly well, a buck I call Callie. He's either five and a half or six and a half this year. I'm not 100% sure on that. He's a regular in this area, so I knew it was just a matter of time until we saw him. The deer we're actually after this morning is Hermit, and he could definitely be in this area. It's just kind of a, an oak ridge here in between a couple sections of pine trees. Um, I've hunted this area a number of times and have seen some good uh, cruising buck activity so it was a, a pretty cool encounter with with Cali. It was pretty cool vocalization and, and cool footage too. brought unseasonably warm temperatures and almost no activity until last night when the mystery buck walks underneath Jared's stand. As the buck fades away into the night, a cold front begins pushing through the area and with it comes the much anticipated northerly winds. After his first hunt in a new area six days earlier, Aaron Warburton has thought of little other than his next assault, this time deeper into the public marsh. With the rut ramping up and cooler temperatures in the day's forecast, it is time to be aggressive. It's October 30th, and uh, me and Sean came in and we did a hanging hunt in the dark this morning. Had that front push through the middle of the night last night. It's been hot the last three or four days, up close to 80 degrees with southerly winds. Wind switched about midnight, started coming out of the north, and now it's blowing straight out of the north at 15, 20 miles an hour. We're in a spot this morning that we never hunted before, but it's back in this big marsh, thick, nasty fields over here to my right that I believe those bucks could be bedding in. 
There's a little beaver pond over here about 30 yards away. And those deer are running across the top of it. And uh, there's a bunch of rubs and stuff down in there whenever we were hanging the stand. It's about an hour before daylight right now, so we'll get settled in and try not to blow out of this tree. On this hunt, we were headed into an unfamiliar location that we'd never been in before, so we utilized our Cabela's headlamps to scout on the way in. That's how we came across this stand location in the dark, having never set foot in this area. Jared has another close encounter with a great buck while hunting a frigid forage Big and Beastie plot. During the early stages of the rut, Big and Beastie can be the perfect draw for doe groups. If you find the does, you'll find the bucks. And nothing does a better job of concentrating the does than an attractive food plot. Though Trophy Rock also makes bag mineral, the rocks are the most portable. You can easily carry them into the most remote parts of the farm. You want all your deer to be as healthy as possible, not just the ones close to the road. We love hunting from our redneck blinds because we can shut all the windows and trap our scent inside. This is great for hunting around food plots where deer are likely to come out from all directions, but is also important when hunting areas where the wind swirls. right before eight o'clock right now. And uh, me and Sean just saw a pretty good buck cut across this marsh out here about 150 yards away. He was headed to the west. And these, uh, these little ditches along the edge of this dike are pretty deep and run clear up to the north fence line of this place. So he's either gonna go north or south from there. I guess he could bed down out there, but they're moving pretty good. And it's early yet. I can't see him now. I threw a couple of grunts out after I saw him, but hard to say if he could hear it or not. It's pretty windy, and he's a couple hundred yards away, but so far that's the third or fourth buck we've seen. I'm not sure. We had a couple of them come in early right here at this scrape. It feels good this morning. Just wait and see what that deer does. Smoked him. Got him. Oh. oh, Sean. Oh, Sean. Oh. Dude. What just happened right there? 
Oh my gosh. 10 yards, I can see the light of knock down there. I don't even know what that thing is, but it's a toad. Holy cow. Sean and I come in here this morning. We woke up at 3 a.m. to do a hanging hunt in this spot. And the reason why I picked this stand is because we can see across all this thick, heavy bedding. This stuff is, you know, chest high. And the deer are living out here in this swamp. That buck come right down this green strip, right here to 10 yards, and we just plugged him, man. We got that temperature drop, and these bucks are on their feet this morning. I'm shaking, dude. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, I think he, he should be down right over there. Looked like it got him good. Oh my gosh, happened so quick. It's covered in blood. Covered. He was just slightly quartering, so it should have got both lungs because it was really tight to the shoulder. Already looks like that he's bleeding good right after the shot. So you can see right here behind me, right where that sucker came down, that dike and uh, that little ditch full of water is right there. He didn't want to cross that. He just funneled right down here past the stand. We got lucky when we set it up, but it was in the right spot. Let's take up the blood trail. Spraying blood right here already. As soon as he come out, he's got tons of blood. No, it's still pouring out right there. Tons of blood. Oh, now that's that makes me nervous there. See that? Yep. It's a piece of corn. There's a chunk of corn right there. I mean, there's some corn fields out here that the deer's obviously feeding in, but with that quarter two angle, that arrow may have come out back through the liver and the stomach. It's got good blood on both sides, the entry and exit. I know I got at least one lung, but, and probably a double lung, but it makes me kind of nervous seeing that. I'm gonna back out for a little while before we go in any further, I think. No need to take any chances. Trail cameras have become a super important part of our hunting strategy now. On the new Muddy Trail cameras, we have fast trigger speeds, time-lapse mode on the ProCam 12, and very crisp, sharp nighttime images. So you can tell what you're looking at these are all factors that help us to better identify and pattern the bucks that we're hunting. My hunting arrows tipped with rocket steel heads are just as accurate as arrows tipped with field points. Every year, I check just to be sure, but every year the impact point out to 50 yards is identical. The accuracy of these broadheads gives me a lot of confidence. When hunting public land, most of the time we're hunting in thick cover, close to bedding areas. To be prepared for any shot, I use the Cybex multi-pin sight. This allows me to draw and shoot when the action's fast in any situation, and I can trust that the sight is going to withstand any of the punishment that I put it through. It can be hard to get full-sized ag equipment into small food plots, but the RTP Genesis Cedar comes in two sizes, 5 feet and 7 feet wide, so there is no space too small to get a perfect food plot. You can match the size of the cedar to the size of the job or the size of the tractor. Four hours after Aaron shot the big marsh buck, the rest of the public land crew arrived to help unwind what the bow hunter fears is going to be a tedious blood trail. Well, it's almost 12 o'clock right now. It's been about four hours since I shot the deer and two hours since we stopped here at this uh, blood where there's that little piece of corn in it. I think it's a good shot but you can't ever be too careful. So we just went ahead and backed out. We gave him plenty of time, so, and there's lots of blood. So let's get on it and see if we can come up with a big buck. <laughs> he's right there, he's dead. <laughs> he's done right there. <laughs> no way. All that worry for nothing, boys. 
It ate him right up. Look at that stuff. Oh, man. Oh. Look at that buck. Old swampy Iowa public land buck right there. That's pretty cool. Got him right there behind the shoulder. I'm anxious to see where that exit hole was. I was so nervous that that uh, exit was back because I found that little piece of corn. But heck, when we found that piece of corn, we we're only 30 yards from him right here. <laughs> oh my, that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. He's a nice buck. <laughs> yeah. Ah. No, he's a good one, man. He's a good one. Yeah. Thirtieth. What's that? Not that all. Well, I couldn't be more thrilled with this deer and uh, having all the guys out here to help just as icing on the cake. Definitely a team effort out here on public land. We've been working as a group for a long time. The biggest key to this hunt has been our scouting that we've been doing all year. And we continue to touch on hunting bedding areas on public. But more specifically, we're looking for mature buck bedding areas way back in here where nobody else is going. Right up behind me here, you can see this uh, this little dike and it's about five six foot deep there's beavers and stuff in it and there was ducks and geese on it this morning as well it also serves for a great spot for them to bed those bucks can lay up against this thing on this dike and uh, never see any predators come from that direction because coyotes bobcats and stuff are not going to cross that deep water right there to get to them so they can sit there with wind advantage at their back and um, just be bulletproof. Back there behind that dike is just thick, gnarly marsh grass, a lot of diverse, thick cover back through there, and um, that's what's holding these, these guys right here. It's not much different than the buck nest that we've been hunting all month. Um, just way back in there and, and thick. He come down right in front of the stand, he was probably gonna do just what those three-year-old bucks did at first light, work those scrapes and then turn around and go right back up in there and uh, we just got lucky enough to get close enough to him this morning on a day when, when the bucks were up and moving. We had a cold front push through the middle of the night last night and the temperature dropped 20 degrees between yesterday and today and he just couldn't take it. He came out of that bed and area, he had to work those scrapes. It's that time of season right now when they're hitting scrapes really hard and uh, we just happened to get a good shot at him before he got there. But I'm extremely thankful, very, very lucky to get this buck and. Like I said, it's been a team effort all around all season out here on public land, and hopefully we can get a few more down come November. With my bow setup, I'm shooting heavy poundage with long draw length. I like to combine that with a heavy Easton 5mm full metal jacket arrow. This setup maximizes penetration for these big body mature bucks. The challenge out here on public land is getting way back in here where these mature bucks live. We would not be able to do it without these lightweight muddy quick sticks. I harvested this buck this morning on a hanging hunt, was able to come in here for the first time, slide up the tree dead quiet and catch him by surprise. Hoyt has been committed to building high quality bows for many, many years now. Every year they come out with top of the line bows, but I love shooting my old Hoyt Alpha Max. It's never let me down. Taking a bull elk with it this year, along with this great mature buck this morning. Realtree makes 12 different styles of their famous and highly functional Easy Hanger. You can find one that is perfect for holding your bow close at hand, stowing your gear, or positioning a video camera where you can easily capture your hunt. There's even a model that allows you to quickly attach a trail camera to a tree. We've had very good success with the Ozonics units in tree stands, but they are almost foolproof in ground blinds. By placing the unit over the open window, we basically create a curtain of ozone that destroys nearly all odor that would otherwise leave the blind.
After two days filled with family activities, I'm excited to be heading back after Skinny. I will give the stand on the edge of the feeding area one last shot. It is do or die for this high impact option, the place where I feel I am most likely to see Skinny. The only question is whether I can keep the other deer using the field at ease long enough for that to happen. At the same time, 50 miles to the east, Mike Reed is heading out for a Halloween hunt of his own, hoping for redemption on a big eight-pointer that he encountered in 2015. Well, it's October 31st. It's about 67 degrees. It's a little bit warm. We got a nice stiff south-southeast wind, and this area is uh, loaded with bucks. The main target here is Brutus. He's the one I'm hoping to see. There's lots of bucks that are moving through here, though, and it'd be fun to film a lot of the four and a half year olds and just kind of build history with them. Uh, this plot, as I've mentioned before, is sort of a poor man's plot. We came in here, four or five guys, and cut all the brush out and put in some wild game buffet. And uh, it looks good. It looks like a carpet. And it's right next to the beams. And it's a big ridge that goes down to a cedar thicket on this side, and a big ridge that goes down into a cedar thicket on, on the other side. And it's just a natural crossing we noticed last year. So we came in here and put some food. And uh, it's been a hot area, just like we expected. So we can get quiet, sit back, enjoy the afternoon, and hope for one of our big shooters to show up. We've been on stand for about an hour. Wanted to give you a quick update on the, the overall plan for hunting this buck. This is obviously one of the spots that we're focusing on. It's a place that it, it just seems like a lot of deer come to feed here, which means that in the evenings, if there's does here, the bucks are gonna come just to check them out. So for morning hunts, uh, I've got a stand that I just put up last week in this block of timber behind me. It's probably 200 yards back in there. So we should be able to approach it from the road and get to it, sort of a backdoor strategy. I've been picking this deer up on four different cameras spread around in about a 60 acre block here. And it's a little bit tricky trying to figure out uh, you know, how to make a play on every part of what we consider to be this deer's range. So we're gonna focus on the safe bets at first. And then as we get further into the rut, we'll become more aggressive and hunt some of the spots that are just a little bit tougher to get out of at the end of legal shooting time without bumping deer. The best buck of the evening is a very nice eight pointer with lots of potential. Though the day felt good, Skinny never appeared. After alerting at least one deer on exit, I made the decision to move these stands across the creek to a new spot that we could get away from more easily. Um, we're gonna abandon that stand and uh, be a little bit more careful now. We had a couple of them that picked us off in there tonight and uh, had some blowing and yeah, it's just not any good when that happens. So when you're hunting a 60 acre patch like that, if you're relentless in it, uh, you're eventually going to spook an awful lot of deer. So we have to wait until the conditions are perfect and then only hunt those stands that are no-brainers. Mike sees steady activity, but Brutus is a no-show. October is in the rearview mirror, one of the best ever for us. The last 31 days have buoyed our hopes for a great rut to come. Anticipation runs high, tempered only by a warmer-than-normal forecast. Despite the predicted temperatures, we know the rut will stir the forest and push bucks to do things they otherwise would not. That is what we love most about the next four weeks. It is what keeps us coming back year after year as we are once again chasing November. <laughs>